Welcome to podcast number one with Muscle Car Concepts and Restoration. I'm John Clement. I'm Todd Otto. Right now we're talking about Todd's origin story. We've been talking about it about ever since I've been here, about two and a half years ago. It's been a long time. Um, so, Todd, why cars? Why you, why, car, why muscle cars I don't specifically? Think, I don't think there was anything else. I think it was just, that's just what I grab, grabbed to, I guess. I wasn't going to do anything else. And with those cars, what was what was your first car very that you first ever had? One. Your very first car, and how did you get it? Um, I do believe it was like a '72 Pontiac Bonneville. What oh, color? It was a four door. I don't. Even, I think it was like a cream colored. It was a big block. It wasn't piss green. No, it was kind of that army tan. Is what it looked like. Nice. But I never drove it. You know what my first car was? Um, I think it was your pickup, wasn't it? Well, it was a Delta 88 piss green with a piss green interior. There you with go. With a white top. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Had tractor speakers in the back and a boat radio strapped to the dash. That's about the way it typical goes, teenage car. So how, how did you get your Bonneville? Um, uh, it was sitting in the backyard. I had, had some money saved up. I thought, man, that's the first car. So I think I paid like 300 bucks for it. We drug it home. A friend of mine, we tried getting it started, and he had the, had the cables on backwards and blew his battery up in his truck. <laughs> sure that wasn't your truck? It wasn't mine. So, but, uh, yeah, we drug it home. Like I said, I never drove it. It sat in the backyard, and... And I think that's when I got my uh, 71 T-Bird, and then I sold the Pontiac, sold the engine tranny out of it first. And so your 71 T-Bird, I know you're a T-Bird lover. I know you are. So your 71 T-Bird was the first T-Bird that you actually fell in love with. That I owned, yes. Yeah. 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 So I paid 1500 bucks for that one. So with your cars and all your car buying and all your car experience, when you first started, um, for the viewers and the people watching, how did you get started into doing what you're doing right now and doing what you love? For example, what was your first mentor like, um, the one you looked up to? It would probably have been my shop teacher, Mr. Terry Reams. Yeah, he would have been probably the inspiration of pretty much all of this. Mm -hmm. So. My dad, he fixed cars too, but his was more mechanical yes. stuff. We didn't get into painting and. And you said you said Terry Reeves. Terry Reeves. So for Terry Reeves, what did he do? Like, did he do everything custom, one-off restoration, like we do now? Well, he was a shop teacher. Okay. In high school, and then, then he taught the auto body class, and then once I got out of school, then I went to work for him, which we did collision work and then some small restoration stuff. Yes. But that's that's how I got started in this. So, and then moved to Omaha and worked in a collision shop and a couple other ones, and until I jumped into my own thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what was your first job working on cars? Straight, was it straight out of high school? Was it when you were still in high school? Was first, it when well, you were two years old? <laughs> What are two years old? I was painting Hot Wheels then. <laughs> custom, custom stripe right here. That's right. Put a 440 in there. Tell you what. <laughs> I'd like to see that done. What's that? Hot rod? Hot, hot wheel. Hot wheel. Painting Hot Wheel. Yeah. Done done a lot of them. <laughs> I think I might still have a couple of them out in the case out there in the showroom. So. I bet you do. But what was, what was your first job? Get back to the podcast here. As far as cars, was working for uh, Terry Reams. Like I said, he had a body shop downtown. Mm -hmm. I worked for the county and got laid off, and then I was just went down there to see what he was doing, and he goes, asked me what I was doing. I said, well, I'm going to go out and look. we got to find a job. And he said, well, you could just work here. Yeah. So that's where I started. And yeah, He taught school during the day, and... We stood in school, and then he'd come back after after school and see what we'd done for the day. Yeah. 
and then until you let you know what you needed to do after that. So, yeah. Yeah. So with working on cars in your first job, did you have any upset customers for that job or was that later down the road that you had your first upset customer? Probably much later down the road. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're not going to please everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter how you try. I mean, you could paint one side of the car and it'd be mad at you because the other side doesn't look very good and you say, well, I didn't even paint that side. Or there's 15 million door dings in it and they say, hey, what would yeah. you do to my car? Stuff, so... So with your 71 Bonneville, oh no, what was that, 70? It was a, yeah, I think it was around 70. 70 Bonneville and your 71 T-Bird, your first two cars. With either of them, how fast did you go? What was the fastest you went? I think that's what the viewers want to know, how fast Todd Otto can go. Um, I would say... 55. No, <laughs> it was probably a little more than that. I'd say probably with the 71 uh, T-Bird, it was probably, I don't know, 110, 120 probably. I swear, every time I follow you or riding with you, you always go like 55, no, no over. <laughs> I'll learn <laughs> lessons. I think it was young age. That's probably most of it. No offense. 110, I'm guessing that was in your T-Bird. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And then uh, after the 71 got wrecked, I bought a 68 T-Bird from my shop teacher. And we took it above the dam. We were, I think it was a guy with a 68 Pontiac. No, it was a Buick Wildcat, big block. And we got to race around on the top of the dam. <laughs> going, and I, I passed him, and the next thing I know, looked in the rear view mirror, it's just about sparks flying out from the back. And the back wheels were about ready to fall off. Oh, jeez, and Pete's. So that was kind of the end of <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> Speaking about sparks and racing people and all that, have you ever got in trouble with the police? Car related. Car related. Um, well, probably no, because only I've only had one speeding ticket. And that was in. Was that the hundred ten speeding ticket? No, never got one. That was come out of Omaha. Actually, drive my mom's car. Yeah, that was. What'd your mom have? Oh, geez, it was just. A, was it seventy-seven I, Pontiac? No, actually, it was Pinto. Uh, seventy-seven Pinto. No. Ice cream gator. No. Grocery gator. <laughs> it was a grocery gator. <laughs> it was a Tempo, Ford Tempo. It was an eighty-five, I do believe. Yeah, so that's what she had. The cop knew you, and you're like, no. you never had any speeding tickets or anything, so he just pulled you over. No. He said we were doing, I think it was either 9 or 10 over, and everybody else was passing us, but we were the ones left. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you're, you were still speeding, I still pulled you over. So. Slow poker. Yeah. <laughs> My question is from your first job to the owner of a one-off custom restoration shop, how did you get here? It's a long road. <laughs> very weavy road mm -hmm. so after your first job where did you go next how long did you work there at the first job um god i think it was and how old were you i think it was like probably 19 i think 19 or 20 yeah and i was there uh, maybe a year year or so and then we moved to, like i said then i moved to omaha <clears throat> worked at a ford dealership obviously mm -hmm. you know Worked there for, I think it was about three years. They went worked for another dealership. That didn't last about six months, and they closed the body shop down. And then we, then I went back to Omaha, kind of trying to do my own thing. That didn't work out, so I went to work for another shop. But yeah, it's like I said, it's been kind of all over. Yeah. Stuff so, but. How did you get to Lincoln? Um, I was living in Fremont, Nebraska, and I figured I was going to move to Lincoln, and I was going to be here for a year. Just a year in Lincoln? Just a year, and I was going to move to Colorado. When was that, back in, like, 2000? Uh, that would have been probably in 90, I think it was, like, in 98, 99. 
You do know it's 2024, right? I know. Okay. So what made it here that you loved the most? Um, I don't know if it was just that. I think it was just, as everybody knows, time. It flies mm -hmm. by real fast. Next thing you know, you've been here God knows how many years. Yeah. So, yeah. But now it's like, go for it. See what happens. Take that risk. See what yeah. happens. Yep. Yeah. Through you moving all around from Kansas to here to Omaha to Meade to Lincoln, what was that all like? What did you go through? Um, there was a lot of, a lot of struggles, you know, doing different projects, different working with different people. They wanted to do different things. It didn't work out. They had their ways about doing stuff, and I just couldn't do it. So I ended up. Um, leaving out mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, like working for work for another shop here in town. And I got into uh, doing some custom work on some Camaros and turn them into Trans Ams and stuff like that. And, yeah. Yeah, you know, that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Would you have any advice for future business owners, future car people that want to get into the industry, that want to learn everything? want to be that top one, the top restoration builder. Do you got any advice for them? Hmm. It's a lot of work and you got to have the right customer. Everything, everything's got, should fall into place. It's just, uh, I thought all you can do is say it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something you can just say, this is good. This is what you need to do. It's going to be easy because it's just not going to do it. So now, I don't want to point out your age, but you're older than 20 years old, your 20-year-old self, right? Yeah. If you could go back in time and you had two minutes to tell your 20-year-old self, what would you tell him? Jeez. Wow. Probably take more risk. Wow. Don't, take, don't try to stay on the path. Just do a lot of different things. You what know. else would you tell him? What kind of risk would you tell him? Well, to just take? say, for instance, doing the Trans Am thing and the Camaro, I would say take it a lot further than I did instead of letting somebody else run with it. Mm -hmm. um, just jump on it and go. That's what I would do with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would have probably turned out a lot different than what it did. Yeah. And stuff like that. So, yeah. But one more advice. One more advice. I won't stay too long on this question. One more advice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's... If you're going to do this, you're going to have to make sure that uh, you're going to have somebody to back you up on it because you're going to need some, some cash bill. flow. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't have that. So I basically just started with whatever was coming started in. Started with nothing, pretty yep. much. Yep. Wow. So and now you're here. Yep. So now we're here. Wow. When you tried to do the car stuff and had to go back to working for someone else, was that kind of demoting, demoralizing when you wanted to do your own thing, but you had to go back and work for somebody, go back to a nine to five job? What, what was that like? I mean, it wasn't demeaning or anything like that. It basically, I think I pretty much looked at it as like working for Todd Spidell. It was more you know, almost helping him with his, what he was doing. It didn't bother me none. I mean, you know, we just went with the flow and with his and, you know, I already knew what it would took to run a shop. So I was just knowing that you can't stand around with a thumb in your hind end and, mm -hmm. and wait for somebody to come up and say, here, do this. You just did whatever you had to do. Yeah. You know, like I said, coming in early in the morning before everybody else and sweeping the floor even though I didn't have to. Stuff like that. So, And I know a little bit ago you mentioned the Trans Am. I know most people think that the Trans Am stopped and they didn't come out with it. The yep. newer stuff. Um, yep. And I know that people think uh, um, the people down in Florida did them and built them. Right. What is the 2010 Trans Am? The 2010 was 
Kevin Morgan did the design work on it, and then I kept bugging him about it. I says, you need to build it so people can sit in it, touch it, look at it, and I said, that's what you need to do. And then when I had the opportunity to do the first one, that's what I did. It took me a bit to cut up a brand new car, but... I you cut up a brand new car? Yeah, it was brand new. It was, I think at the time, it was like 48 grand. And was that a 2010 Camaro you based it off yep. of, correct? Yeah. It was one of the one of the very first ones in probably, I don't know, five-state area, I do believe. Wow. Well, Where did you build this? Uh, we built it here in Lincoln. Um, it was just a small, small shop. And yeah, it was it was like a whirlwind deal. How long did it take you to build this twenty two? Um, I think we had I think we had like thirty days to build it. Wow. So I mean we did we changed the front bumper cover, um, made the custom grill and stuff like that, and then the hood, but the shaker on it because you gotta have the shaker on the hood. Now with the front bumper, don't get me wrong, I think he said there's five different cars in that front bumper the first one the first one was just was some abs plastic that was like like a bumper cover mm-hmm. that i just put on it but the second one uh that was where a lot of them different bumpers came into play it was a bit mm-hmm. of cadillac and some g8 and actually it was a ford lightning parts on it so <laughs> Wow, that's pretty cool. And how many people built the first one with you? Was it just you? No, there was, uh, let's see, I think there was like three or four of us Mm -hmm. that were working on it at the time. Yeah, it was, yeah, then we took it to uh, Trans Am Nationals in Dayton, Ohio. Wow, how was that? It was pretty good. Yeah, we drove it out of a trailer, and I think there was like, I don't know, 350 people standing around waiting to see this thing come out of the trailer. Now, with Dayton, Ohio, and you getting it there, and back then, I know you didn't have a trailer. Mm-mm. And I know you didn't have a truck. No. So I think you're driving around, what, a Ford Focus with a fart can on it, wasn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. And then your boss came out and was like, Arch, how old are you again? You're too old for this. Yeah. And what do you say? What did you say to him? I just told him, I said, hey, it gets at least two or three more gas miles per gallon because I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't care about anything else besides the gas mileage. Right? Well, I was driving 35 miles a day each way, so got to get that extra, extra oomph. Yeah. Right. Where did you get the truck and trailer to be able to do um, this such cool event? So my brother, he one of his friends knew another guy in Omaha that had a uh, office furniture place. They had their small trailer that he hauled okay. his Cobra kit car in. So we borrowed that, and then and there was another guy here, and actually in Waverly, uh, we borrowed his truck and hauled it out there. Mm-hmm. And it was, then I remember when Kevin Morgan looked at, or asked me if we got it here, and I said, yeah. I go, he goes, where's it at? And I said, well, it's in that trailer over there. And he goes, that trailer's too small. I said, no, it's in there. And then, he goes, can we go look at it? And I'm like, yeah, you can go look at it. He goes, we'll just try to gradually just kind of walk over there without a whole bunch of people going over and looking in this trailer. So we did that, and he got up in there, and his, that was the best part of the whole thing is when he actually got to see what he designed he drew. and the look on his face when he stood in front of it, stand over it, and going, just look back at you and smile and say, this is what I was waiting for. So, so what that what all did you change? So if we grab a 2010 Trans Am that you built, we got it back for some reason, and then we bought a 2010 Camaro, and we compared it side to by side, what would be different? What all did you do to that car? Well, the the first thing would be different would be the tail lights, because if I told you how I got that, it was me and my brother were driving around and I seen a Cadillac, I think it was a DTS. The bigger one. Mm-hmm. Tail lights were kind of tapered at the top. I told my brother, I says, there's our tail lights. I said, we could take this one and turn it this way and put it on the side and that one and flip it back over and I can, because it had LED strips in it and with the backup light down below. And I said, we could turn it so it's like the Trans Am because the backup lights are in the middle and the back. And then it still have the three row 
LED lights, and I could tape over it, put black strips in it. I feel like you have a light bulb on top of your head sometimes. <laughs> when you see something, you're like, got it. Light bulb. Yeah, that's sometimes that's what you do. So the tail lights are different. What else yeah. is there? Um, of course, from the first one, we changed. When we went to the second one, we changed it a lot. We used, like I said, we used Cadillac um, fog lamp pockets off of the CTSV. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else did we do to it different. And then we changed the tail lights. Actually, we changed the rear spoiler on it because I had to custom make those. Mm -hmm. People seeing how I did that, they'd be like, okay, <laughs> chunks of styrofoam, orange clean off wheel and shaping them and cover them with fiberglass. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot of work. I bet. I bet. Did you change anything on the interior on those? Um, or was it pretty much the same? I think the first one, I think, I don't think we, the only thing we did was change the ammo deal on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. I think that's about all we changed on the first one. How many of these cars did you build? Um, I think we did, I think we did, I think we did four of them. Okay. Yeah. The last one was a lot, it was completely different from the first ones. As far as the Trans Am goes and you building one-off custom restoration stuff, is there anything else, any other car that you have done? Well, we did. Many people probably don't know about. Well, we did, the, we did one off the same base, the Camaro, but we did it in the 69 GTO Judge. Oh, wow. It was that... Basic, it was the orange, but yeah, it had a, cust a lot of custom paint stuff on it. Mm -hmm. um, I cut the quarters on it and widened it. I think it was like two and a half inches in the back so we could get some 335 tires underneath of it and stuff. And then once again, we used Cadillac parts. I cut the lower part of a Cadillac CTSV bumper and plastic welded it to the original Cadillac bumper and then custom taillights again, um, a spoiler. With a, I think we took one off of a G8 and I cut it and made it so it would fit the back. We had pieces from Australia on it wow. off of a G8, which would be a uh, Holden. Um, took that, ran with that, put those on there. Um, custom made the hood, um, so it had the two inlets for the ram air part, and then custom built the whole front bumper cover mm -hmm. on it. Wow. Yeah. So did you take that car anywhere, or did you just build it and we took sold it to it? we unveiled it. We unveiled it at Paramount Studios in California. Wow! So wow! Did that? That was we took the Trans Am and then the GTO. We took both those out there. Got I think we were out there for a month. We did toured the Price is Right studio. There was a couple other ones. We went to um, there was a guy that does Coca Cola product placement. I went to his office. Um, it was kind of cool because I was sitting at the long table and he goes, we were talking about different people that have been in here and he goes, where you're sitting right now, he goes, uh, he goes, it was uh, Clint Eastwood sitting in that same chair. Wow. And he told me, he goes, at the time, back in the 70s, if you want me to use your placement stuff, he goes, you got to be in the movie. He told that to the guy that owned the company. He goes, I'm not an actor. He goes, I don't care if you're walking beside me or behind me or doing whatever. He goes, you're just going to be in the movie. So that was kind of interesting. Wow. So, Were you ever in a movie? No. Oh. No. Are you soon to be in a movie, maybe? Um, I don't know about that. Down the road? <laughs> It'd be kind of cool. But I know you're not an actor, but I could sure make you an TV. actor. <laughs> <laughs> as far as making these cars, what was the biggest problem you have faced? The Just any cars or ones we're doing... The 2010 and the uh, uh, GTO judge. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> I guess the biggest problem was like with the the last Trans Am or the one we took to SEMA. You know, we only had, I think it was, we had six days to build it. And that's like, I was saying, if we had YouTube stuff back then, we were doing it, it'd be just like, you guys are nuts. Wait a minute. One <clears throat> of those Trans Ams, you only had... Six days. Six days to build it? Yep. How many people were working on that? Um, there was there was four others besides myself. What did the hours look like? How did that even, <clears throat> how did you start, even get that done? So 
<clears throat> we dropped the first one off, the first car we did in Tallahassee. Came back, and on the way back, we stopped in Kansas City and picked up the car at Pro Charger. Um, the front clip was already off, and we dropped it off at the shop. This was on Monday night. I told the other guy that was working with me, I asked, you're going to need to be here early in the morning so we can get started. So <clears throat> I showed up, everybody else showed up, and we just jumped in. I says, okay, we got to have the fenders done by the end of today so I can get them in primer, the hood the same way, um, so the next day so I can get them painted. Same way with the bumper cover. So I worked on the bumper cover while they were working on the rest of it. And it was like, okay, it's, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning, stuff's primered. I'm going to go lay on the shop floor in the office somewhere and get a couple hours of sleep. Get you lay it on the floor in your office? Yes. Did you have a blanket? Yeah, I did. I brought it with me. <laughs> <clears throat> so we did that. Um, so the next night it was paint the bumper cover paint whatever else needs to be painted or primed. So everything by Friday was ready to go together. It's because we had to be in Vegas on Sunday. So it was like, pff, pff, let's go. Um, so on Saturday, we got it all put together. And then one of the other guys, Lowell, he was like, dude, you need to go home and take a shower. You're getting kind of ripe. So it's been five days? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So... So five days, I would say probably about six hours of sleep out of that. So, so hey, you got it done. Yep, we got it done. Then it was funny. We got it there, got it to Vegas, and the other guys from Florida says, the only thing I said, we just didn't clean it up. I'm like, yeah, we didn't. I said, that's what you guys are for. I said, you know, you guys can handle that part. We did this this right here so you guys can clean it up. But anyway, they went off to get cleaning stuff, and I found a roll of tape in the, in the truck, and I just sat there pulling tape and using tape on the carpet to get all the dirt out of mm -hmm. it and stuff. So I think when they come back, we had most of it cleaned up. But, uh, yeah, that was that was a whirlwind. Wow. Yeah. So we took it, got it in SEMA, and, yeah, it was, uh, like I said, when you inside the main hall, and you look down the hallway, and it's, you know, probably 12, 13 feet wide. So it looks like a cattle chute. Just people just coming down, and they get to the car, and it's almost like somebody putting the brakes on. Wow. And everybody wants to look at the car and start looking at it. So it was pretty pretty interesting. That, that whole week flew by real fast. Mm -hmm. So then it was doing, um, we did, I think it was like two or three magazine shoot stuff on it um, then we had an invite to do hot rod magazine we had to drive another hour and a half west of vegas and once we did that i think it was um uh what's his name well the one the guy that does roadkill he's the one that took the pictures of it and i asked him when we were done i says what are the chances of being on the front cover and he goes dude i I took so many pictures this week. It's. Well, I would. I said, this just. He goes, there's just so many other cars, and I said, I understand that. You got a guy that had original '68 or Cobra. I said that could be on there. Well, I think it was like two or three months later. Somebody goes, your car's on the front of Hot Rod magazine. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, that was pretty neat. That's cool. Yeah. So I think that was. Uh, I think they went and did. I think it was like three print runs on that that one magazine. Wow. They said that they very rarely do that. Wow. So, yeah, there were magazines everywhere for quite a while. <laughs> Is there a potential here in the near future that we'll see a Trans Am or a GTO Judge come out? I would like to do. I would like to do one more, and if I do it, I'm going to keep it for myself. Which one? The Trans Am. Trans Am. Yeah. Keep it black, gold. Um, actually, I even thought about doing a blue one. Wow. So what would you do in your final your final one? What would you do? What I'd, car would it be that you would take to do it? What would you change? Um, I'd probably do probably a 13 or 14. Um, I'd just go all out. 
I'd mm -hmm. still like to do the T tops. I already started one and it didn't pan out. So, mm -hmm. but then again, I would just maybe do a wide body kit. Can't really call it a kit if you're making it yourself, can you? Be a custom kit. Yeah. So that's what I would do. Yeah. And you said blue, like a grabber blue, or um, what kind of blue? No, the Camaro they did have a blue. It was pretty good, pretty good looking color blue. Mm -hmm. It's kind of medium blue metallic or pearl on it. Probably a silver, silver blackbird maybe. Custom interior. Oh yeah, yeah. Full blown. Yeah. Thousand horsepower. Man, eh, I don't know if I twin need turbos that. or supercharged. I don't know if I need it. Of course twin you turbo. need it. Yeah. You need to beat your record of 110 miles an hour. I think I already <laughs> did that once. <laughs> Out of all the cars you have built and touched through all your years to now, which one is the f your favorite one? They're like, man, every time I think about it, it's this one right here. God, I don't know if I really have one because I don't think I built it yet. Wow, that is a really good answer. Because I think I want to, you know, like we talked about doing the... Uh, another Bronco doing something completely different. I have a unibody Ford pickup out back. Need to work on. Back to that Bronco. What do you mean by a Bronco? I mean, they, they, well, made, they made the first gen, they made the second gen, and now well, a couple new ones. It's going to be, well, it's going to be a bump side Bronco, which everybody's, there's other people have built, built some already, but I want to do mine a little different. Okay. How would you do it different? Well, I mean, I'll do my two-wheel drive. It'll probably have a Coyote motor in it, um, but it's going to be all black. Everything? Everything's going to be black. Is there going to be any ounce of chrome on there? Maybe the very out edge of the wheel. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You open the hood, it's just going to be, the engine's going to be black, the pulleys are going to be black, everything underneath the hood's going to be black. Wow. It'll shine straight. Gloss black? Oh, yeah. No sparkle? Um, no, just gloss black. Yeah. Wow. That's about it. Black That'd interior. Cool. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. As far as why are these hanging out behind us? Well, everybody knows Bullet. Yep. Everybody knows that one. It's their all car, car movies. Car related. Car related. Everybody knows American Graffiti. Why is this one hanging up? Um, this one here was a gentleman that we went to South Dakota and bought that car. That exact car right there? Yeah, we bought that exact car, unfortunately. What is it? That is a 1970 uh, Cuda. And you bring it back here? Mm -hmm. We didn't even know they took the magazine. We didn't even know it was on Hot Rod at the time. We bought it. Was it that color too? Blue? And it was blue. It looked like the guy opened the hood and got the blue paint out and just started spraying because <laughs> everything was blue, as you can tell. Thought he can do your job, right? Um, I don't know if that was call it my job, but. What was it? $99 uh, that paint guy. What was his oh, name? Earl Shibes. Earl Shriver's 99 paint job. No, Getting think, any card done? $99? Uh, this was probably his cousin. It was $69.95. <laughs> Down in the boondocks in Louisiana, right? No, he was actually in uh, South Dakota. Up in the Black Hills. Um, yeah, well, no, he was, it was more of the flat. I think it was more toward the east. He's part um, of um, Yeah. Yeah, we got it back. More of the Badlands, huh? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. That's so we, even worse. So we got it back. Um, yeah, we tore it down. Found out it was supposed to be Plum Crazy Purple. That's the original... The color, color code was yep. wow. Yep. Yep. We uh, almost got it done. Unfortunately, the gentleman that we bought it for he passed away, and then they had a family had an auction and sold and all of his cars. Didn't he have like eight or nine cars here that were already done? Um, we had, or in the process of being completed. We had the seventy one Cutlass convertible four four two W thirty car. Wow. We had a. Um, Buick GS, I think it was a 68 that was done, convertible. And all of his cars, most of them were four-speed cars. He didn't, then very rarely had an automatic. Wow. So, yeah. So he had he had quite a few of them. Wow. Um, we had, of course, we had a, I think it was a 99 Trans Am here. Um, we had a 
2003 Mustang Mach 1 that he bought. Um, obviously in this car. Then we were getting ready to work, get back into uh, 56 Nomad. What colors were that? Was that going to be? <clears throat> I think it was going to be black and red. But of course, he changed his mind closer to the end. He said he just wanted it red and white mm. on it and stuff. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, like, he, we did quite a bit of work for him, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> as far as everything we talked about, is there anything else you'd like to tell our viewers before we head out of here? Um, well, that's all I got to say. There's a lot more to come. Yes, sir. There's a lot more to come. Um, bigger projects. Bigger future. Everything bigger and better. Yep. Bigger future. Bigger future. I like that. <clears throat> well, we had a good time here on our podcast. Our no first, very first podcast, correct? Yeah, very um, first one. We'd like to see you later. Hopefully you check us out. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. If you'd like to see anything else or anything else you'd like us to talk about, let us know. Again, I am John Clement. And I'm Todd Otto. Thank you. Woo! That Thank was a on. very successful first podcast. Shouts like, out. Like that, that was fire. That was awesome. You guys are amazing. All right. I'm, I'm parched. <laughs> oh, I wasn't recording. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs>